Hey everybody, welcome to my first video. I wanted to chat today about how much I have lost on Manjaro. I am down zero pounds. Well, that's not 100% accurate, but I've been down zero pounds for the past three months. And I think that puts me in a weight loss stall. Now, don't get me wrong, a uh, little backstory, I have been on Manjaro since March of 2023, and I've had great success on it. I lost 70 pounds, which really, when you think about it, I lost 70 pounds over an eight-month span. And I mean, it was just an incredible journey. But I think somewhere around November, December, the holidays, I lost a little bit of motivation. And really, I just called it survival mode. I wanted to get through the holidays without gaining any weight. The focus was no longer on losing. It was, I really just want to maintain and not, you know, gain any weight because in the years past, I think I could walk away gaining five, six pounds, you know, over two, three months span around the holidays, which is, you know, overindulging parties, having fun, you know, it just, we all, we all get into that, that time of year and things happen. But this year, you know, I was very thankful that I maintained. But then when I hit January, I said, okay, it's time to get back on track. All of January rolled around. I didn't really, didn't really find the time, I guess you could say. And I was like, okay, starting February 1st, I'm going to start all over again. I'm going to call, call this phase two. I'm going to kick off a whole new weight loss journey on Manjaro because I still had around 20 to 25 pounds to lose. Middle of February hit. I, I didn't really, just really didn't even try. Um, then, end of February, I was like, okay, enough is enough. This is three months. Yes, am I happy that I have not gained any weight? Sure. But, you know, like I said, this is, this is not going to be just an easy going to lose weight quickly and then get off a of Manjaro and going to have, you know, success maintaining it moving forward. But this is more about, this is the time where I, I need to act. I, I have this tool, as I call it, that's helping me suppress all the food noise and keeping my appetite, you know, decreased so that I can then take the time to really focus on, you know, the healthy habits, the, the gym routine, because in, in every attempt of losing weight, in the past, and I have had some success, some on medicine, some not, and I've had a lot of success, but you know, in some ways it always just came back and, and maintaining it was just something that I was absolutely terrible at. So yes, the past three months I have not you know, lost any weight, but it gave me a little bit of a boost of confidence that I was still having certain habits that I was doing that was helping me maintain but I'm not where I'm at for that to be my number one focus. And so, you know, being on a current dosage of 10 milligrams, I thought to myself, okay, when did I start that? And I started that back in November. So it's been a good, you know, four months of taking that dose with very little success. Now that's, that's on me. I wanted to stay on 10 milligrams because it, in some ways, I didn't have the food noise. I had next to no side effects. So really the medicine was doing what I consider its job. I wasn't doing mine. And, you know, I lost some motivation along the way. And even though, like I said, you know, I built these habits, there were certain things that were starting to creep in. And I decided, you know what, let me take the next couple days because why didn't I you know, why didn't I try to reverse this and get back on track in January or February? What didn't I do? And I just didn't take the time to reevaluate what brought me success in the first couple months of taking Manjaro. And I wrote all of it down and I was like, okay, there are five areas, five areas that I can focus on. And I remembered when I first started taking this medicine, I wanted to do everything in four week increments because yes, as your doctor or whoever is helping you on your Manjaro journey says, 
you know, after four weeks, let's have a conversation to see if you stay at 2.5 or 5, go up to 7.5. Really, it's just every four weeks you're, you're taking a look at, you know, have you lost any weight? Have you, like I said, have you had less food noise? Is, are you next to no side effects? Okay, if you haven't really lost any weight, typically they say, let's go up a dose. And that's been my, you know, my journey up to this point. And I was doing everything in these four week buckets, but for some reason I moved away from that. And I think that's what I need to get back to. Not only that four week time period, but also, you know, just not overcomplicating things and really taking a look at changing every single part of your life. It's just like I said, I found these five areas that I did when I first started. And that is what I'm going to focus on to finally break this stall. I think it's time. I think I, I think the motivation's slowly coming back. I'm starting to feel like energized as if I'm like starting this medicine all over again, starting this weight loss journey. But I'm just, I'm happy that, you know, I did everything I needed to do for the past couple of months and I didn't put any weight back on. But like I said, it's, it's time to get back on track. It's time to start losing, you know, the next 20 to 25 pounds. And, you know, that's all based off of a conversation with my doctor. And it's, I consider it's a goal. But it's not the ultimate goal. I think the ultimate goal is to find yourself, like I said, building these healthy habits, but also like a healthier lifestyle as well. Because when I first started taking Manjaro, I mean, I was a mess. It was probably the worst year of health for me in my entire life. And I've up until that point have, you know, fluctuated in weight. But I always found a way to just be active. You know, I've done marathons and triathlons, and I'll never do a warrior dash or any mud race again. I, I promise you that. that. I could do a whole video, me just recapping what it was like doing that race. I'm, I think I'm still scarred to this day. But I always found a way to be active, and I always had, you know, good numbers during blood work and routines. And, and I think, you know, in 2022, it started creeping up the cholesterol, really high blood pressure, a couple other areas that were a massive concern of mine, especially, you know, with my family history. And I just, I knew I needed to do something. And, and I can also do a video on, you know, what I've done prior to Manjaro, where I wanted to start trying to, you know, get healthy again and just not finding any success until I started taking Manjaro. But for the time being, I just, I don't want to lose the momentum I've had over the past couple months. And even though, yes, I've stalled and I 100% understand when you look up weight loss stalls, it will tell you, you are almost 100% chance that if you're losing weight at some point, you're going to hit a stall. And I agree. I know that, you know, that's in the back of my mind, but I didn't think it was going to last this long. So Going back a little bit in regards to Manjaro and the dosage, like I said, I've been on Manjaro 10 milligrams since November. So I did have that conversation with my doctor about moving up a dose. And we agreed it is 100% on the table. And it's up to me if that's something I want to pursue. And, and I said to him, like I said before, the, the food suppressions there, lack of food noise and no side effects. I think I just, I need to gain that, that momentum and that confidence back that, you know, this is going to assist me in losing my weight, but it's not the number one reason I'm losing weight. And I think I wanted to prove, you know, to myself in the next couple of weeks that yes, you know, my decisions that I make greatly affect my, my weight loss and the dosage and, and being on Manjaro, or in, in your case, it could be, you know, various other weight loss injectables that that is just your assistant. That is assisting you along the way. And that's what I want to have this mindset for the next four weeks to say, I'm going to make these changes. I'm going to finally see the scale and the number drop. And if I don't, or even if I find a little success, that 12.5 is 100% going to be on the table because I do want to keep, you know, keep progressing towards this goal of not only losing 20 to 25 pounds, but also, you know, continuous blood work coming back in a positive direction. So 
like I said, been in a weight, weight loss stall for the past three months, reevaluated everything in my life. And I've come up with these five areas. And right now I want to talk about these five areas because I'm going to be documenting my journey for the next four weeks to see whether or not I've been able to not only apply these five areas, but also find success in them. All right, so number one is going to be protein and fiber. Protein and fiber are gonna be my best friend for the next four weeks. Those are gonna be the two key elements on my plate for every single meal. I'm going to consume anywhere between 100 to 110 grams of protein per day. And then for fiber, as the saying goes, strive for five, strive for five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. I'm going to break out my kitchen scale and I'm going to log back into my fitness pal and I'm going to weigh and track my food for the next couple of weeks. Now for me, I find that to be extremely beneficial when I'm just starting a new weight loss journey or in this particular case, trying to break a stall of not losing weight for the past three months. And I think it also reminds yourself visually and maybe in some cases a little bit of weight but when you know, I go and have one of my favorite snacks, which is lightly salted pistachios, I'll just go grab a handful. When I'm not tracking, I just, you know, that's my handful, that's what I get to eat. But for now, I'm gonna put it in a bowl on the scale and I'm gonna track it and I'm gonna start visually seeing each handful I grab. Maybe it is 28, 29 grams, which is you know, one serving for pistachios, or I might be taking more than I need and, and I'll adjust to it. But what you're doing is you're just building that habit to start being able to visually see portions so you don't have to sustain you know, the, the weighing of your food on a long-term basis. But I think for me, trying to figure out why am I not losing weight, I think I need to get back to weighing and tracking my food and making protein and fiber extremely important. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna have carbs and fat and everything else in between. Those are just going to be the third and fourth element on my plate. Now the second one is going to be daily walks. I am gonna go on a walk for 45 minutes every single day. It doesn't have to be all at once. It could be, you know, two, three times a day to be able to build up to 45 minutes total. And I noticed that when I first started and I was like, okay, every day I'm just gonna get up and move. And sometimes I would get up in between meetings or a little bit of a break between a project and I just go on a five, 10 minute walk. Just mental clarity, fresh air, stretch my legs out. And then eventually I would have a little more time to do another like 15, 20 minute. And I was noticing I was going probably, you know, anywhere from what 12,000 to 1500 steps a day. And then, you know, if you wanted to put it in minutes, it was anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour a day. I was just moving. So I want to get back to that. I want to be able to get up and move more throughout the day. And I'm going to make sure that I, I make daily walks a priority. And then number three is string training. Now, when I first started Manjaro, I remember talking to my doctor and he was like, two areas you really need to focus on is what you're eating and lifting weights, strength training. You're a female in your 40s. It's extremely important you know, for you to build some more lean muscle so that you can increase your metabolism and so many other variables. And I remember saying to him, well, you know, in the past when I would you know, try to lose weight, I focused on cardio. Cardio was number one. Strength training was number two three, you know, some core, and then some flexibility and mobility exercises. But I always was like, I was running, I was walking, I was doing spinning, rowing, just anything that was cardio focused first. And he said, flip it, focus on strength training first and cardio second. So that took a little bit of time for me to even just mentally get over that hurdle because everything I've done before, that's what's worked. So here's this new thing that I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm going to trust him. And so it's been a while since I really focused heavily on strength training. And at the gym one day, I ran into the manager of the personal trainers and I said, I have to start strength training. It's been a long time. I want to make sure that I'm, I have the right technique, I'm doing the right exercises as a beginner. And, I, and the ultimate goal is just to not hurt myself because you know, I've had two back surgeries and neck surgery and, and just a couple other little, little issues along the way. And I wanted to make sure I was taking the time to really, this is going to be my focus for the next couple months and maybe even my life. I want to make sure that I'm doing the right exercises. 
So I started with him one time a week in the beginning of taking Manjaro. And yeah, we did a beginner program. It was a little tough at first, but it really was just, you know, getting the muscles moving, not super heavy weights, not like crazy reps. And eventually we started building up into a couple more advanced areas. So before um, I was trying to figure out how am I going to break the stall and I was looking through all my notes, I found uh, that I was tracking some of my exercises and my reps and, and the weight. And I looked at some of the things that I was doing early on and I put together a little bit of a strength training program that I'm going to do for the next you know, four weeks. And it's going to be four times a week and it's going to be a combination of upper and lower body exercises and also a little bit of core thrown into the mix. Now, mobility and flexibility is something that I'm just going to do on my own, you know, on a daily basis just to keep myself loose and make sure that I'm not getting hurt. But if there is a day where I'm, I know that I'm not going to be able to get to the gym at any point and, you know, I, I really want to make sure I'm hitting my goal of four times a week, I, I dusted off my, my weights from my guest closet and I currently have them sitting on a stand next to my desk. And if I'm in the middle of a, an hour long meeting where thankfully cameras will be off because nobody wants to see me strain training but i'm going to pick up some weights and i'm going to do what i can do at my desk upper or lower body and be able to just get some sort of strain training program done for that day so that i can hit my goals now the fourth one is hydration we all hear about how important it is for us to stay hydrated while taking manjaro and i'm not going to go into the scientific sides of it or the, why we need to but I just know that when I first started taking Manjaro, one of the things that I focused on was right as I got up in the morning, you know, you're still feeling a little tired and I would have a glass of water, I would have a glass of water with my electrolytes in it. First thing I do in the morning. And I don't know if it was mental or not, but it just gave me that boost. And up until this point, I've had next to no nausea. I, I don't have any loss of energy. And those are the two things we hear a lot. I know there's a couple other things, but when you're taking Manjaro, they always say, why am I so tired? Or why am I so nauseous? And thankfully, up to this point, I have not. And maybe it's because when I first started, I, I, you know, I'm talking about hydration right now, but before I talked about protein and fiber, and I focused on that. Maybe it was what I was consuming, or maybe it was just, you know, keeping my hydration levels up throughout the day. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do anywhere between 100 to 120 ounces of water. I dusted off my trusty tumbler. Uh, that's about 40 ounces. And I'm going to try to do at least three of those a day. And, and I think, you know, I got away from that. I wasn't drinking as much water as I'm used to because I think, you know, there was a couple of weeks where maybe every other day or a couple of times a week I was having toe cramps. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, I didn't really overly exert myself today. What am I doing differently? Do I have some, some food that was a little higher in sodium? And really what it was is I was not drinking enough water. I probably only had 40 or 50 ounces of water that day. And I started noticing, you know, that was the, the track, not enough water, a little bit of toe cramps. So now that I've really started to focus on that, even before I started this program, I started upping my, my water intake. And now that I'm going to be adding daily walks and strength training, I think the sweet spot for me is going to be anywhere between 120 ounces of water a day. And then the last one, the last one is going to be sleep. Now we hear how important sleep is, you know, what, anywhere between seven to nine hours is the average, I believe. I don't get anywhere near that. And that's not because I'm not trying, but I'm lucky if I get three to four hours of just continuous, uninterrupted sleep. And I've had conversations with my doctor and we've talked about doing, you know, sleep studies and, and a couple other different things that we could do to help, not medicine wise. Um, but I think, you know, we're going to focus on this for the next four weeks. I'm going to figure out what are the things that I can do prior to going to sleep? What's the environment I'm sleeping in, making sure that, you know, I have you know, my, my room darkening curtains closed and the right temperature and just, you know, making my, my bedroom a little bit more on the comfier side. Um, and then also, we were just talking about hydration. I'm going to try to cut off my water a little bit early in the night because I have noticed the past couple of weeks that I would have had to get up probably anywhere between like 2.30 and 3 to use the restroom. And I would go, all right, let me fall back asleep. No, two, three hours later, still just awake, tossing and turning. 
So I have to find ways to, to maybe, you know, cut off the hydration earlier, find, you know, calming methods to be able to shut the brain down so that I could be able to sleep and get in anywhere between seven to eight hours. That is my goal. My goal is to get seven and eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. I'm not sure. I'm going to stay positive. I'm not sure I'm going to really be able to do that for the first week or two, but I'm going to, to track it. I have my sleep app on my, my Apple watch ready to go. And I'm going to track and I'm just going to see, you know, how many hours I got of sleep. What did I eat the prior day? What was the exercise? What was my hydration? When did I stop it? I'm just going to start looking for areas that I can, can uh, improve on to better my sleep at night. And there you have it. I think those are just going to be the five key areas that I'm going to focus on for the next four weeks to hopefully break the stall that I'm in. And I've been sitting in for the past three months, sitting at the exact same weight. Uh, just to recap, I am going to focus on protein and fiber. I am going to go on daily walks. I am going to finally hit up the gym again because I was only going one day a week for a while. So four days a week, I am going to go to the gym. I'm going to increase my hydration and I am going to do everything I possibly can to improve my sleep habits. And I would love to hear from every single one of you that is watching this video. I'd love to hear what you know has worked or, or even what hasn't worked for you. I think that we find strength in numbers, uh, a lot of knowledge. We can, we're all on the same journey. We can learn so much from each other. And I know that each and every one of us, um, things work for us that may not work for others. And I understand that 100%. But I love hearing from each and every one of you of what you know has worked and what hasn't worked and where you are in your journey. If you're just starting out, these might be five areas that you should focus on. If you're trying to break a stall, try to break the stall with me because I'm going to do everything I possibly can. I'm feeling extremely motivated to finally get myself back on track, be able to lose you know, anywhere between 20 to 25 pounds is right now what we're looking at and we'll adjust as we go along. And I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll follow along with me on my journey. I'm gonna be posting weekly updates on where I am in regards to you know, breaking the stall, what has worked, what, what hasn't worked, and um, just trying to finally get myself back on track. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.